everything. Okay, so uh, so we started our warm up. We we went over uh, data scraping and f of x and all that kind of good stuff. Um, I want to next just run over a couple quick before we get into our exercise for today. Um, just a couple, uh, just some feedback, and we can do this as a group. And so this is I'm not singling anybody out. This is we're just giving group feedback. Um, so in fact, let me put up the screen so that we can draw. We can maybe draw right off the soccer. Okay, I failed as an instructor. Okay, all right, so, um, okay, that's not gonna work. I'm just gonna pull that. Okay, so let's just talk about uh, so feedback. So, all of us can get better with our figures. I get better with my figures all the time, right? So, this is, we're, we're just uh, giving feedback for generic folks on stuff. Just like writing, when we, when we you know, write something, a lot, I'll speak for myself, when I write something, a lot of times the first one is kind of crappy, and I need to, get something down, and then I have something to work with. Then I can edit, tighten up, tighten up, tighten up, correct for spelling, check for, you know, all that, all that kind of stuff. And so that's the same thing with our visualizations. So we're starting to do visualizations, that's awesome, that's great. They're gonna get better, all of us will get better as we go through the semester, and that, that's what we want, so it's all good. Let's take a look at this guy. So this is a, a figure, don't remember what, uh, so I just grabbed a couple figures from stuff you guys turned in last week. And so, um, so here we go. So what do you guys think? Good, bad? Tell me, tell me, let's give this anonymous student some feedback. What do you guys think? Okay, so Jorge, Jorge's like, I'm not, I'm not sure where I should be oriented. Like, uh, okay, possibly. So wh how, how would you address that? Or, how, or what's one possible thing you might try to address that? Ah, okay, good. So now, the reality is you can make whatever figure you want for things, but there are some rules of thumb. And so, um, this is a scatter plot. Is that technically wrong? No, it's not technically wrong, but not the best one. So a scatter plot would be I have no idea what X is, and I have no idea what Y is. Or said a different way, X is just a random grab of something. Uh, student heights or something of that nature, right? Measured the first student, they were 5'4", next student was 6'2", and on, you know, and then we were taking their, I don't know, blood sugar or something like that, right? <clears throat> so, so that would be a good scatter plot. Don't know the relationship. Looking to see if there is a relationship. In this case, inherently our x-axis, the thing just to the right of one of those random dots is related to the thing just to the left and the thing just to the other right. So this would be, for example, this would be something like time, the classic representation here. So we're, we're starting off at one point, going through our journey to the next point, to the next point, to the next point, to the next point. So in those cases, um, a better representation would be a line uh, graph because the line is implying there's the previous dot as something might have something to do with the next dot. So we can envision it, and what is this? This is deaths, but we can imagine it, like let's say if there was a, a cycle of disasters, we can imagine that the number of folks that passed away last year might have something to do with the number of folks that passed away this year, right? Uh, so I would say a better one for this would be either a bar chart or a line graph, um, just in general. Okay, good. Uh, what else? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, great. So this is a great one. So, so Em was saying this here, this this 1900, she has a hard time saying, is this 1915 or 16 or, or whatever? So she wants some more visual cues here. That could either be a label in between, 1910 it could be, or it could be maybe even no label, but a tick mark or a grid mark, right? So a visual... A visual helper um, with that. 
generally speaking, here it's, I mean, th there's so many dots, it, it's hard to distinguish them, but generally speaking, this one is fairly easy to figure out. You could probably eyeball it. But once we start to get really far away from the axis, those fine grain, those fine scale differences, that becomes hard. Like this one, if we just look at it here, wait, is this 1982 or three? I don't, you know, I don't, I don't really know. So, um, I mean, I don't know. I, I would say from the, I don't know if you need to go finer than that, but but that's a, that's one example, right? So maybe you want to try that, see if it works better. Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. Other thoughts? Other ideas? Check. I guess the title could be more specific. Yes. Yes. So, okay, that, that's another good one. So for our titles, is this wrong? Deaths versus year. No, that, that's what it's showing. But that's kind of, that's kind of blah, blah, right? It'd be better if we said, um, if, if, if there was a pattern there or, or, or some underlying thing we were exploring that we wanted to communicate. So for example, you could say something like, um, uh, well, I don't know. What, what do you guys see the pattern is here? Let me ask you guys. Or is there a pattern? So it looks to me like we have this era here where there's a good amount of deaths. This era here where there's a good amount of deaths, right? Not so much in this era, relatively speaking, not so much in this era, right? So you could say something like intermittent uh, or, or, or mortality spikes intermittently, right? Or, or you know, I don't know, 50-year gap or, you know, something. Like, so so a, little, a little interpretation would be helpful. If you totally can't figure it out, th this, is not, this is not incorrect. But we'd want some more explanation, at least. So this is the data from Europe. This is the data from Oceania or, or whatever, okay? Another one? Again, is this wrong? No, but but it might be nicer to put this in thousands over here. Maybe not. I would try that, right? Or label this three hundred thousand. Maybe three hundred k is is the right answer. But I would try a couple different variants there. That may or may not be the best. We don't. And even though I told you guys that you should always label your axes and the units, right? Units in parentheses. Um, but again, this is an example where, so this wrong? No, that's not wrong, but it's pretty obvious. I think everybody looking at this, that saw 1900, 1920, 1980, especially if we maybe added a little more descriptor or something like that in the, in the title, we could leave off, we could X off this year and that would, that would still be okay. I don't think any, I think everybody would understand that that's a time series. Okay. How about this one? So we got the we got the line graph, we got the linear thing. So that's that that that's cool. Yeah. Okay, it's all good. Over here, like the millions. Yeah, so so this is not bad, and it's your first one. I think this is this is fine. But but once you start to get more sophisticated, there's a lot of noise here. Or that's, that's that's not right. There's there's it's probably not true that no one died between you know 1950 and 1980, right? Um, in Europe, probably at least a few, at least a couple people died, right? But because of the scale, we can't we can't distinguish that. Right? We can't resolve that that scale of difference. So this might be important, right? This is like where the most folks were dying was, was back in the day, right? So that tells us something, right? That says that in modern times, we've not had massive deaths in Europe from natural disasters. So that, that, that's an informative thing. Um, uh, but if, because, so, because it's such a massive swing, one thing you could do is you could do an axis break here where you know we would this would go from zero to, I don't know, 50,000 people, and it would break, and then it would go to millions. So that's one thing you could think about doing. But, but in general, um, I think this is good. So we dropped the year, so there's no year here. 
we have a title. Um, uh, you know, it might be nice to say something like total deaths from natural disaster in Europe, you know, have been declining since early in the century or something like that. You know, it's again, something to help us interpret. Other feedback? Alexis, do you have a question? Okay. How about this one? Thoughts? So, uh, so the title a bit better than just X versus Y, right? So, so now it's helping us. To, so we're kind of get oriented as what we're looking at. Okay, that's that's cool. Yeah. Yes. Oh my God, it's a lot of years. So, so first and foremost, yeah, it's too many years, right? So it gets distracting. So visually, we should have a a gap, right? So, so you know, like like a decade all or. Five year, ten year, twenty years, something like that, right? We, we we don't we don't need we don't need every single year written here, and I would argue it's clearer and easier to see and easier to interpret when we're more judicious with that with that type of labeling. Do you guys agree? Like this versus this, it's easier to glance at this and get a sense of what's going on on the x-axis. Okay. Okay. Uh, yeah, the grid lines help. Definitely, the grid lines help. But let's stick with this. So so this one, if we start, then we start to look at it, I'm like, wait a second, it's 1900. Then it's 1965, and then 1980, and 81, 82, 83, 84. But then it's like 96, 96, 96. So, so this looks like um, uh, the student that was working on this didn't do the summarization or didn't do it do it properly, right? So there's a, there's a list of all those accidents or, or disasters as opposed to summing across the years, okay? And so what's gone on is is the graphing program is treating these each thing as if it's it's – a, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, and it just happens to have a, a, a year um, label on it. But, but that's what's going on. So we can't, this is, we can't really interpret this, right? Um, or it's too hard to interpret. Okay, then the other one on, the, on this guy, so here we go, uh, damages. So, um, and, this is, and this is several folks made this uh, error, and it, it's, a, it's, it's one of the reasons I gave you the data set, because I wanted you guys to, to struggle with this. But just to be clear, the 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 value was the the um, excuse me the the economic valuation was in thousands right but some of you guys just looked at the raw numbers and thought it was whatever that number was but it was really that number times a thousand right so the units were were times a thousand of U.S. dollars so as a consequence some of you guys are saying oh the 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 cost of this disaster or these disasters over this decade or whatever it was was you know, X millions of dollars, when in reality it was billions of dollars. So we always have to double check our units. Remember, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to download that data, make sure we got it, and it looks okay, and then we're going to just spend a few minutes poking around. Hey, here's this column. What is the units? If the units aren't labeled rigorously in the data file we get, let's go back to the website and, and poke around the website, and somewhere there should tell us, oh, this is square meters, or this is Degree, is that degrees Fahrenheit, degrees Celsius? Oh, it's degrees Celsius, like that kind of stuff. So all good. Um, and so, uh, so generally speaking, I don't, I don't think I like this too much. I, I mean, I know that's, I know that's the raw data they gave you, or the raw formatting. I think it's better to, to, you know, just have the raw numbers or, or something else. But this is sort of a strange nomenclature to just use. I would say. The other one is remember that when you guys have large numbers, go ahead and put a comma in, right? So right here. This is, I'm looking at this like, wait, what is this number? Is this 20,000? Is this 20? Okay, so it's one, two, three, comma, one, two, three, comma, oh, two million, right? So by putting the commas in there, that'll help visually, that'll help us or help your audience interpret stuff. The other thing to remember, okay, I think we have one more in here. Okay, what about this one? What do you guys think? Okay, so so we have a, a title and a, a caption. That's cool. You don't, I, I don't, not necessarily. You guys don't necessarily have to do a caption, but you're more than welcome to if you want to. Uh, Holly, what do you think about this? What do you think about this guy? The uh, the, 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 the y-axis. Do you like that? Okay, cool. Yeah. 
Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, so in general, we, when we, we're doing something, we, we, we pick our interval. Maybe it's a half million, maybe it's 100,000, whatever it is, right? We always want the, the topmost part of the graph to go you know, beyond that. So we want to make sure that our, our values, our, our maximum value is less than the, the maximum value up here. Now note that, that if you just throw this into one of our sort of default graphing programs, it'll do some kind of auto, auto spacing uh, dealio, right? And maybe that's fine, but more often than not, you probably need to adjust it. So maybe if we just threw this in randomly, it's going to go to, you know, the maybe this is, I don't know what this is, 3.7 or something. I don't know. Maybe it'll, it'll make this top be 3.8. I would go in and make the top be 4 million and sort of force it into an even bracket. That just visually, it's easier. It just, it just helps people when they're estimating. Don't have to, but that's a nice thing. Next, I would have for deaths here. Again, we could we could drop off years, but we don't need. I don't think we need years. I think that's cool. Um, I think this is cool, but I think in this figure, I think the the it would be nicer to have at least a, a tick in here, right, or a grid, because the night where's the 1930s? It's a little. It's probably here, but it's a, just a little bit hard to see. Whereas if I had a nice little, don't have to necessarily put another another uh, label there, but if I had a, a nice little light grid line right there. It would, it would visually, oh yeah, okay, that's the, that's the that one, right? So I think that would help. Um, and then I would probably do this deaths and then parentheses millions. And I wouldn't have an M by these guys. I would just have 3.5, 3, 2.5 3, like that. I think that would be tighter. With all this stuff, again, we're just, we're just, we're taking wax. We're, 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 we're constantly like shaving, you know, try this, try this, try this. Sometimes we're going to try something and it, might intellectually sound right, but then when you actually look at how the graph, how the data actually play out, it's like, nah, it doesn't, it just doesn't work. It doesn't work. Um, uh, I, I should also say, usually you probably want to take this down to zero. So we're never going to have, there's no such thing as a negative two people died, right? We didn't, the disaster didn't create, well, I mean, <laughs> I don't know, maybe some people uh, got romantic and made a baby or something. But, 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 but generally speaking, you're not going to make people, right? So, so this notion of a negative value here, that, that is sort of a bit nonsensical, and that can sort of throw us a little like, wait, it's deaths, but then there's negative deaths? So, so I would force that minimum to be zero on the, on the y-axis, and so that'll help as well. All of the things we're doing here are all designed to show that you understand and I care about you, and I want you, my audience, to understand this, right? Not marketing, I'm not trying to trick you into something, but I'm trying to help you understand. The more we have chart junk, the more we have r random weird tick marks and all this, that, that, that gets in the way. That gets the way between you and me. That, that's, that's junk, that's fuzz, that's, that's, that's blurriness. Don't want that, right? So one of the reasons we're editing is not just to make sure that, that we have the data correct and that it's, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's right, but uh, it also is a way of respecting your audience. And you're saying, yo, I want to help you see what I'm seeing here. Check this out. And the more we develop that skill, the better your work is taken no matter what you do in your career, right? If you guys work on disasters, cool. If you do ESRM stuff primarily, if you do something else, that's a, that's a life skill. And that, that will be appreciated by everybody at the school board, at the landfill site, you know, wherever. And so that's what we're working towards. We're working towards, working towards. Em had a question. Yeah, like that one? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, yeah. Each 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 row was one representative yeah. was one entire disaster, yeah. It 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 it's six and one half dozen the other. So 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 I would I would try a bar chart. I would try a line chart. Um, I mean I mean this gets more sophisticated than we are at, than we are yet. But 
you might also try thinking of doing something like um, a, a smoothed, a smoothing routine, right? Right, right, right. So that's why we, so, so there's other techniques we can use. So typically what you'll see with COVID data is you'll see a seven day or 14 day average. So they're trying to take, I mean, they're doing that not be, I mean, so this is real. This right here happened, right? People's, well, I don't know, 1900 is probably crap estimates. But by the time we get up to here, th these are real, um, uh, you know, as best as we can, accounting for the number of folks that passed away in these events. COVID, there's all kinds of crazy shit that happens. San Luis Obispo only releases their COVID data on two, twice a week. LA County does uh, five days a week. Ventura County, five days a week, right? So I'm going to be comparing five days a week to two days a week. By definition, some are going to be larger than others. So there's some logistical reasons in the case of the COVID stuff that it's it's not it's not an app it's not any one day isn't necessarily an apples to apples to apples. So by doing a seven day average or a or a fourteen day average, you you take out the fact that San Luis Obispo doesn't report on Monday and that other people report on Monday but they didn't report on Saturday and Sunday. So Monday's a huge sweat, you know, all that kind of stuff. So so they're there are different approaches, the different approaches that we can take. And as we start to get more sophisticated, we can talk about those. Cool? All right, great. Um, any, any general questions about this stuff? Making sense? Okay, so what we're going to do today for our exercise is uh, we, so it's, it's live now. If you guys need to get a computer, you can grab it in a second, but let me first give you the or overview of what we're doing. So um, uh, this, is, this will be due Friday. And so our big question here, is, our overarching goal of this is, hey, what's up with what's up with wildfires? Are things more or less than they were uh, in California back in the day? Are they more expensive? Are they deadlier? Are they bigger? All that kind of stuff. So I've I've uh, created two data sets for you, and the third is just a document from. Cal Fire's website, right? Cal Fire members are state fire agency. So uh, again, don't do it yet, but just have a look up here with me first here. So we're gonna, what you're gonna actually turn in is one PDF that's gonna have multiple figures in it on Friday, okay? Um, and so here are the, there's three files you can download, and then as you go through, I, I walk you through them. Again, two are Excel files. So, so two are tabular data. One is a piece of a PDF that you have to turn into your own data file. Oops. Okay. So uh, I have a thing about scrapers, data scraping. Like what is that? And then I want you guys to watch it. It's very short. It's like four minutes. Just watch this. So there's a tool called Tabula that um, you guys can run that will scrape this data file. So I've all I've done is downloaded this data file from the Cal Fire website, and I'm just giving you the file. You could have gone and navigated it yourself, but just to make things easier, it's there. So you guys, the, the first step for this is to figure out how to use this tool to scrape data and, and get your data in a usable form. Even the best, even the best data scrapers you need to double check. Just like I said, you always need to check the units, right? Make sure like what the, you always need it to, now if it's like 10 million cells, you can't check 10 million cells, but I didn't give you a 10 million cell thing, right? I gave you a, a few dozens of lines. So you should go through after it's sucked in and make sure that it's going to work for you. Recall, if we're, if we're graphing this column, and this column is how tall Dr. A is, or how tall your professors are, right? I'm expecting a number in each of those. So, so how many inches or how many centimeters or whatever. If I have, you know, my height, Dr. Steele's height, Dr. Reinman's height, blah, 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 and then somebody else has some text, that's bad. 
when I have a column of data that I'm expecting to be numerical data, I want nothing other than numbers in there, numbers and decimal points in there, maybe a negative sign. So if I have a, if I have a you know, Sean in there, right, that's going to screw me up. What's going to happen if we do that, most programs will look at that and say, oh, it's not all numbers. It's just alphanumerics. And, and the program will not recognize those numbers as numbers. It's just, it's just going to think they're, they're like letters. So after you've done your, your, your tabul after you've done your data scraping, go back and double check. And you might need to edit a few cells. You might need to go, oh, delete that. That doesn't make any sense. There's, there's no data in there. Or, oh my gosh, this should have a, I don't know, another one in there, whatever. So again, double check the output. Make sure it makes sense before you start trying to graph stuff. Cool? So that's, that, that's the first one. That, that, uh, the most important thing is to make sure you guys can, can make this tabula work. Deal? And then, um, and then you're going to visualize the cost. What happened, what happened over time with, with costs? Okay. And then for the trends over the decades, uh, I have uh, the data is here. And uh, I want you guys to play around with some, so, so far we've just talked about variable X, variable Y, but we could be more fancy or we could have more data, de higher data density in there. And so for example, uh, check this out. So here we have X, which is time. Here we have Y, which is acres burned. Okay, makes sense. But now we have something else going on. We have color. And so color is telling us something. So in this case, the darker the color, the more, the larger number of structures that are burned. So if it's more yellow pale, not many burned. If it's more uh, charcoal brown or whatever it is, tan brown, that's going to be more things burned. And, 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 and there's something about the size of the data point. So the size, so the color tells us a little bit of another variable. And then a, a fourth variable is the depths. So the size of the dot reflects the, the number of folks that were were harmed or were killed. So those are all things we can tweak and, and you can play around. So I want you to start playing around with that and have some, you know, if you're using Plotly. Again, you don't have to use Plotly, as with all of our stuff. You can't use Excel. You can use Excel to manipulate data, but don't want to use Excel for the graphing part. But you could use R, you could use whatever. Even though I'm sh I show you, I default to showing you guys in Plotly because it's free and easy to use. Um, again, you could you could choose your own device if you program. If you choose to use Plotly, that's what I'm showing you here. But again, don't feel like you have to quote unquote use Plotly. Cool? Make sense? All right, let's go some doing some graphing, everybody. Let's do some graphing. If you guys need computers, computers up here, and let's do it. Do -do 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 -do. Do -do 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 